Hey y'all, I am back with a new lunchbox video. If this is your first time ever clicking on one of these, this is going to be me packing up lunch for my husband to take to work. He is a truck driver who normally works five days out of the week, so I'm going to be sharing five lunch ideas. I like doing this for him, not because he asked me to, because he doesn't, but I know that it makes his work day go smoother. It's just one less thing that he has to think about, and I know it saves him some time and money. So first up, we have been loving these turkey pesto pinwheels. So in this little bowl, I have about two spoonfuls of cream cheese. I did pop that in the microwave for about 15 seconds just to make it easier to stir. And then I mixed in about two spoonfuls of pesto. So I'm just going to evenly spread that out on two regular sized tortillas. These are definitely on the saucier side. Honestly, I just made a little bit too much of that cream cheese mixture, but I had it there. Of course, I was going to use it, but good thing we like things extra saucy. Um, but yeah, you definitely don't have to add that much. Next, I'm going to add a big piece of lettuce and I'm going to kind of press that in so that when I go to roll it, it's not like moving around. I also picked up some oven roasted turkey from the Kroger at Deli. As you can see, these are on the big side. So I did two slices per tortilla and I just love how that lettuce and turkey like fit perfectly on the tortilla. So satisfying. But lastly, I'm just going to add two slices of provolone cheese per wrap and then I'm just going to tightly wrap that up. So I did have a slight issue with my tortillas wanting to crack, but that is just because we now buy like uncooked tortillas that I have to cook first so they're just on the fresher side but I wrap those up in some cling wrap and I pop those in the fridge for 30 minutes. You definitely don't have to do that but since I microwaved my cream cheese it was still on the warm side so I knew if I would have sliced it it would have been like a sloppy mess so I just wanted to firm up that cream cheese makes it slice prettier and I am left-handed so I'm sorry that my other hand is in the way of the camera. I should have put it on the other side the camera I should say but here they are I think that those look pretty darn good so I'm going to put those in this divided container that I got at TJ Maxx. We love it. And I was honestly surprised with how many pinwheels I could get from those kind of small tortillas. But I did double stack those and he said it was very filling. He really enjoyed those. And to go along with it, I'm going to give him some of this Smokehouse Burnt Ends Dip. I have seen so many people talk about this. You can buy it at Walmart. Um, apparently, it's like the number one dip according to several people. Um, you can eat it either cold or hot. I personally prefer it to be hot and I dip it with like Ritz crackers. It's definitely very different and unique. The first spot I wasn't too sure, but it is pretty good. It's just a little on the sweet side. So if you want to try it, expect that. I'm also going to give him a little side dish of pineapple that I cut up. This one was perfectly ripe, really sweet and good. And I know this probably isn't typical, but he wanted a bag of Doritos to go along with that dip. He and my daughter love these Chili Cheese County Slim Jims. I'm not a beef jerky girl, so I personally not tried it, but again, they love it. So I gave them one of those. And while I was at go time, I saw these Butterfinger little dessert cups. I know that he really likes these, so I picked one up. Um, and it has like angel food cake in it pudding, Butterfingers, Cool Whip. I don't know what else, but um, he really likes these zero sugar monster energy drinks. This is his favorite one. So I'm going to give him one of those and he's going to get two bottles of water in each clip of this video. Anytime that Josh goes grocery shopping with me, he tends to put stuff in the buggy that I don't typically buy. Um, this is one of those things. This is some pre-cooked grilled chicken. And he opened this bag to make him a couple quick like wraps with ranch, lettuce, and cheese. So I knew that bag was open that you have to use that pretty quickly. I believe it's like three days. So I wanted to think of something different that he could take to work that I knew that he would really like. Obviously, you can use this on literally anything that calls for chicken, but my mind went to chicken and rice because that's one of his favorite meals. So I have one of these Ben's Original Ready Rice Roasted Chicken that you just cook in the microwave for 90 seconds. So I'm going to pour all of that out into a small mixing bowl. As y'all seen, I diced that chicken into pretty small pieces and I'm just throwing that in with the rice. I originally wasn't going to add in all of that chicken because it just seemed like too much, like the ratios weren't right from chicken to rice. But eventually I ended up adding all of that chicken in and I'm glad I did. 
it all worked out really well in the end. So I'm also going to add in about a half a can of this cream of chicken soup. Um, I did save the other half. Uh, I put it in the fridge and I'm going to use that on another recipe. But I just folded that in and then I'm seasoning it with lots of black pepper. This does not need any salt because all of those ingredients were salty enough. Trust me. Um, so I'm just going to get all of that dumped out into a greased 8x8 eight eight casserole dish. And I'm just taking the back of my spoon and just spreading that into an even smooth layer. And then lastly, I decided to throw on some shredded cheese. You just can't go wrong with that. And I ended up baking this at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. So while that was in the oven, I'm going to prepare him a little snack box, as I call it. So I made some sausage and cheese bread on this day. So, so good. I will leave the recipe for this in my description box. It tastes a lot like sausage balls. My family really enjoyed it. And I'm also going to give him an orange that I sliced up into these little wedges. Like I've said before, I believe I was talking about it in a kid's lunchbox video. I store my oranges in the refrigerator before slicing it. And when they're so cold like that, it makes them like a hundred times better. And we just fly through the oranges now. I typically like to throw in some sort of treat. So I'm going to give him one of these little Debbie... I call them Easter puffs. Um, it has like a chocolate cake, marshmallow, and it's coated in white chocolate if you've never had one before. But by this time, the casserole was ready to take out of the oven. I topped it with some parsley. And I'm going to give him a large amount of this. He needs the protein. He needs the energy. And I just know that he'll eat it all. So here's a close-up of that. And I will say, y'all, this was so, so good. Like, this isn't how I would make it for dinner. But for a quick option, like, I would do that again. Really good. Um, so we're the type of people who likes to drizzle A1 steak sauce over our chicken and yellow rice. So that's why I gave him a little side container of that. And I gave him a diet. Pepsi on this day and I did wrap that sausage and cheese bread in some tin foil that way he could take it out and heat it up in his hot logic lunchbox which just plugs into his truck to heat up his food so he could heat up his chicken and rice as well. Next up, I'm going to make him some honey garlic meatballs. Now, I'm sure some will say that this might be a little bit too much effort for a lunchbox, but I don't typically do stuff like this all that often. And really, meatballs for me is like really fast to throw together. And I just had the energy and the time to do it this day, so why not? So in this bowl, I have about a pound of some ground beef. I added in a third cup of some Italian breadcrumbs, one egg, and I seasoned it with onion and garlic powder, salt, and pepper. That is it for the meatballs itself. So I'm getting that mixed together with my hands and then I'm just going to pinch some off just enough to make a decent sized meatball. I'm going to roll it around until it's smooth and then I'm just going to place those on a plate until they're all rolled. So that's about how many you'll get with a pound of ground beef. I've got a skillet nice and hot on my stove and I'm just going to add all of my meatballs and I'm not looking to cook these in the skillet. These are actually going to be thrown in a crock pot. But I'm just trying to like sear all the sides. That way they won't just like turn to mush in the crock pot. And it's also a good way to get rid of like excess grease. Um, if you have like a greasy meat, this is actually a leaner meat. So as you can see, there's not like barely any grease coming out. But I'm getting all those flipped over with my tongs. As you can see, I kind of got a little bit too much of a sear on some of them. I much prefer cooking meatballs in the oven under the broiler. It does it so effortlessly and quick. But again, not trying to cook them. So I'm just doing it in my skillet. And I did also get the side as well. I just didn't show it. So I got all of those transferred on over to my crock pot and now I'm going to make the sauce. So I got some sweet baby raised barbecue sauce. I didn't measure anything. I just kind of eyeballed it, but you need roughly like three quarters of a cup of that. I'm also going to add in some ketchup, about a half a cup, and then I'm going to do about a quarter cup of some honey. Lastly, I'm just going to throw in a big spoonful of some minced garlic and mix it all together. That's it for the sauce. Just four ingredients. Super easy. So I'm going to get all of that drizzled over the top of the meatballs. I'm definitely making sure to scrape every bit of that out of the bowl. And I went in with a soft spatula 
to make sure all of the meatballs were coated in that sauce. I'm using the spatula that way. I don't like cut up the meatballs on accident, but I'm going to add my lid and I'm going to let those cook on low for four hours. And here is what they looked like when they were done. That sauce has like caramelized to the meatballs. And I just love like the texture of ground beef when it's cooked in a crock pot. I just think it changes it. And y'all, this recipe is so delicious. Highly recommend it definitely getting it covered with some extra sauce. So yeah, you can serve these at a party. You can serve it for dinner. Um, just all around. So good. Also, we had some leftover potato salad in the fridge that needed to be eat. So I served it with that. Um, this recipe will be in my next video. It's going to be a what's for dinner, but it has red potatoes, cheese, bacon, chives, and the sauce is like mayo, sour cream, and ranch seasoning. Definitely one of our favorite like summer side dishes. So I'm going to add a fork. And I'm also going to give him a little dish of kiwis. He loves kiwis. So I peeled those and sliced them. I hate peeling kiwis, let's be honest. And then lastly, I threw in a pack of these cheese crackers by Keebler in case he needed an extra snack. And I also added a Diet Mountain Dew. Josh loves tuna. So instead of doing like a regular tuna salad, I decided to switch it up just a bit and make a tuna pasta salad. So in this mixing bowl, I just added a few good spoonfuls of mayo, a little bit of mustard and some garlic powder. I'm doing a little bit of some fresh lemon juice and some dry dill. You can use fresh if you want to, but that's not something I typically keep on hand. And I'm just taking this small little whisk and getting that mixed together until you can see that everything is combined good. So I'm going to add two cans of tuna. This is the one I buy, the Star Kissed, one packed in water. I had such a hard time getting those cans open. My electric can opener did not want to open those. Um, but I did put those in a fine mesh strainer to squeeze out like the excess water. I seasoned the tuna with salt, pepper, and onion powder. I threw in a chopped stalk of celery. And I'm going to do a big spoonful of dill relish. Or you could use sweet relish if you prefer that. And I'm going to get all that mixed together good. Really breaking up that tuna. And then lastly, I'm going to add in some cooked shell pasta. Um, I did about half a box of that, um, drained it off, of course, and really you can do any pasta that you want to here. I just thought the shells would be different, you know, and I'm just folding all that together gently, and that is it. I'm going to give him a good amount of that, and he loved this. He said that he would like to have this more often, and I just think it's such a great, like, cold lunch option if you don't have access to a way of heating things up, or it's just kind of a hassle. This is just a great thing and a filling thing, so that's that. That's his tuna pasta salad. I'm going to give him a spoon and now I'm just going to make him a quick sandwich. So I've got two pieces of wheat bread. I picked up some buffalo seasoned deli chicken and I'm going to give him quite a bit of it. I, I gave him six pieces of it so it's going to be a really thick sandwich and I'm just adding so much honestly because I forgot about this and deli meat does not have like a long, I shouldn't say shelf life, but you know what I'm saying. It doesn't last long once you bring it home. So I'm going to add some mustard on top. I'm going to do one slice of Sargento sharp cheddar cheese, a few pieces of lettuce, and that is his sandwich. I did decide to cut it in half diagonally just to make it, for one, prettier and also just easier to eat. So there's a little close-up. I am going to be putting it in this, um, like, reusable bag that we are fairly new to. I'm also going to make him a little yogurt parfait. This is something that he really enjoys, so I do it pretty often. So we're going to do a strawberry yogurt, and I'm going to cut up some of those strawberries after I wash them. So I have this smaller divided glass container. A lot of people ask me where I get my dishes from. This particular one came in a pack of two, and I got it from Big Lots. So I dumped the strawberry yogurt out. I'm adding my strawberries in the other department of it. Um, that way it doesn't get like soggy. He can add that when he's ready. And I decided to give him some cocoa puffs for like the crunchiness in it. I normally do like a chocolate granola, but I just felt like switching it up. And I have personally done this myself and I think it's pretty good. Lastly, I'm going to throw in a oats and honey granola bar. We love all the flavors of the Sunbelt. So along with his water, he is also going to get a zero sugar L8. And I also just wanted to include kind of how I'm 
wrapping up the sandwich because why not I did seal it with some cling wrap first that way everything would stay together and it wouldn't just like completely fall apart once I got it added to that bag because these bags are pretty big it's not like a tight fit so I figured that would be necessary but that's the sandwich ready to go This last lunch is gonna be what I call a clean the fridge out lunch. So I'm gonna be doing some fried chicken wrap. So these are the tortillas that I've been using. These are the same ones from that first clip with the pinwheels. Um, these are the uncooked ones that I was talking about. And you guys recommended the Kroger brand. I didn't know they made those. Um, so thank you for that suggestion. We really love them. I typically buy the Tortilla Land ones, but these ones were really good as well and cheaper. So I drizzled on some ranch. I added some shredded cheese and these chicken tenders um, came from a night out. We went out to eat at Malone's in Lexington, Kentucky. So we brought home some leftover chicken tenders and I did not want those to go to waste. So that's what I'm using for the chicken, which they were so good. And I'm just folding those up and I'm securing them with a toothpick so they don't like completely unwrap. So I'm getting that added to my little Walmart container. Um, I got this for like less than 10 bucks and we have used the heck out of it. Really handy. Um, my dad sent us home with some leftover coleslaw. So I wanted to be sure to get that eaten. We like it topped with black pepper and we like to dip it up with some crackers. Lastly, in this box, I'm going to give him a little snack size bag of these snack um, pickles. I guess that's what you call them. We go through these jars pretty quick. Like we really love these particular pickles. So I'm going to make sure that bag is sealed really good. That way nothing like leaks on out to the wraps, ruining them. And then in the little snack box, I'm going to give him the last piece of peanut butter Reese cheesecake that I made for his birthday. Yes, I'm just handling it with my hands. Oh, well, this cheesecake was so delicious. Um, I'm also going to give him the last of the fruit that was in the fridge. So just a cut up, golden delicious apple and the last of the blueberries so there's his fork and he's also going to get another diet mountain dew because that is typically what we always have on hand but that is all i got for today's video i really hope that this could be helpful for anyone out there who is looking for some lunchbox ideas i want to thank y'all so much for watching this video to the end appreciate you guys so much i hope you all have the best week and i will see y'all in my next video bye guys